मिल के
of Jesus. I'm going to ask one of our lay servants, my brother Troy Stevenson, to come, amen, and take us to the throne of grace. I want to share also as Troy comes, uh, this whole month, amen, we have a powerful, powerful uh, lay servant ministry, amen, which consists of six, six brothers and sisters, amen, and we're going to they're going to be bringing the word all this month. Amen. Powerful, powerful word. Amen. They're going to be bringing uh, the theme of Advent, which is hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. So each of our lay servants will be bringing uh, a word. Amen. Uh, to you this, this month. Amen. So we just want to uh, keep them in prayer as we can we continue to pray and lift up the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning El Church family, Facebook family. As we pay ourselves that we go to the throne of grace. Father, have the precious Father God. Lord, we come thanking you today, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the land down the last night and waking up this morning, Father God. You did it, Lord, but you didn't have to do it. And Father God, there's so many things that we can thank you for, Father. But Lord, right now, we want to thank you for keeping us from all hurt and harm and danger, Lord, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout this year so far, Lord. And Happy Father, I'd just like to say, Lord, I'd like to ask you to continue to do with me what you're doing in my life, Lord. But not only me, Lord, all the other people that seek to see your face, Happy Father. Because Heavenly Father, we all come short sometimes of the glory of God, but Lord, that's why, Lord, you look at us up high and you sit low, Lord. And Heavenly Father, I ask as we go into this service, Lord, that the speaker of the hour, Lord, that it touches someone, brings someone closer to you, Lord. Let her word come down in this place, let us fill this place with the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Father God, we ask all these things, Lord, of your precious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Season. 
And all of this was circled and all of this was in the light of the soon coming King, Jesus the Christ. So we light this first candle. We light this first candle of hope. A candle in which we remember the hope. And even today, we remember hope in times of difficulties, in times of uh, danger seen and unseen. We remember the power of hope today. The candle of Christ's fulfillment of hope that the angels was praising and the excitement of God's promise would be fulfilled. The time is coming and I will fulfill the promise that I made, said the Lord. The time is coming and I will fulfill the promise that I made. And this came from the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, verse 14. Amen. 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 As we continue in this worship experience, uh, we have a hymn of praise by our divine choir. Amen. If you would come, amen. As we take us in, as we go into the season of Advent, amen. As our divine choir comes to worship, amen. Glory to God.
knees because that's the power of the Spirit, amen, that is still working in our lives. Glory, glory to God, amen. Our Old Testament reading will be coming from the book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9, and you're hearing that our New Testament reading is coming from the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 34 through 38, and you're hearing had the word of God. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait a minute. Amen, Pastor. Glory, glory to God. Amen. We all may not get to that word at the same time, but we're going to get there. Amen. We're going to get there. Amen. First Lady Linda will be reading the word of God. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God. Amen. Okay. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Okay. The Old Testament, chapter 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens to come down so, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains, quaked at your presence. From ages just no one has heard, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen, and God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your, in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned because you had yourself. We transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. <coughs> Verse, oh, sorry. And our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Verse 7. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us in, into the hand of our iniquities. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the pot. We are all the work of your hands. Verse 9. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider, we all are your people. Amen. Now I will be reading the New Testament. And if you are able, please stand. And the New Testament reading is coming from Luke 1, verses 34 to 38. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her of her who was said to be barren. But nothing will be impossible for God. Mm -hmm. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel disappeared from her. Amen. This is the holy word of God. Amen. <coughs>
glory to God. Amen. Amen. Those that are in the back, if you're free, you can come up closer uh, if you want. Amen. Glory to God. It is time for the offering. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise for offering. For the offering. We ought to get excited. We ought to get excited when we think about what the Lord has done for us and doing through us. Amen. We should get excited when it's time to give. Amen. The Bible reminds us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Love a cheerful giver. We want to invite those who are with us uh, online to participate as well. Uh, we, uh, and we have a couple ways in which you can give. Amen. Uh, online, we have Cash App. Cash App, you can send your offerings, your gift, your seed offering. Uh, to us, Dollar Sign, Cherry Hill, UMC, uh, to those that are using Cash App, those that are using PayPal, we uh, receive through PayPal. We have some that still want to send checks, amen. We accept checks. Those checks could be sent to uh, P.O. Box 19811, Cherry Hill, UMC, Baltimore, Maryland 21228, amen. So you see, we have a number of ways in which you can give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you even right now, God. We thank you as the Spirit is moving in this place, Lord. We ask, oh God, as we come to remember you, oh God, and how you gave your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to give back to you a portion of what you have so richly blessed us with. Lord, we ask even right now that you bless the gift and the giver. And we'll give your name honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And also we want to offer, we have our Christmas offering. Amen. Those, uh, those are in the congregation if you need a Christmas offering envelope. Amen. Please see one of uh, the ushers. Amen. To get your envelopes. Amen. Our Christmas offering envelope. Amen. Glory. Just, just for the break.
glory to God. Glory. Oh, it is so good to be in the house.
somebody in that in that spirit, in that Christmas spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody who's ready for a word today. Because I don't take 
things like this lightly. It's a privilege to stand in front of God's people and say anything. And with me, I want to make sure I say the right thing. Because I can steer somebody on the wrong path and I never want to do that. So again, I want to thank my, church, my entire church family for always being there for me. And thank you, Pastor Boston, for being my pastor for the past few years that you have been. The scripture was read in your hearing from Luke 1, from the 34th verse. But I want to go back to the 26th verse. And if you have your Bible, if you would take your Bible out and follow along with me in Luke 1, starting at verse 26, which is the birth of Jesus foretold. Now we're reading the scripture today from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You don't have to stand, I read it. Luke 1, verse 26 says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored me, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 34 says, Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived the son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And may the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. My title today is No Matter What It Looks Like, Don't Lose Hope. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you at this hour just to say thank you. We have so many things to be thankful for, Lord God, but we thank you today for waking us up this morning, Lord God, and starting us on our way, Lord God, and giving us traveling mercies, Lord God, and a warm bed to lay our heads on, Lord God, some food to put in our stomachs this morning, Lord God, some clothes to put on our back, Lord God, because there are people all over this world who do not have those necessities. We had running water, hot and cold. We had toothpaste to brush our teeth, Lord God. And for that, Lord God, we say thank you. Nobody had to deliver fresh water to our homes, Lord God. And for that, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. As we come before you this morning, right now at this time, Lord God, as we are entering the first Sunday in Advent season, where we're looking forward to your coming, Lord God. We say thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, Lord God, to die for each and every one of us, but he, and he got up again. And because he did that, we are so grateful. Thank you that you sent him through a woman to show this world who you are. Amen. And for that, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now have your way in this place right now, Lord God. 
speak through me, Lord God, speak for me, Lord God, so that anything that I say will be a blessing to you and it will bless somebody else. Thank you, Lord. I love you and I praise you. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And again, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks like, don't lose hope. A lot of people in the world today have been living in a spiritually dry land. And they're wondering, why am I struggling to remain confident and have hope where I can look to the future with assurance? How can I hope to walk this path of righteousness to the end and stay on the path? How do I purge anger from my heart? How do I turn the other cheek when insulted? How do I love my enemies? How do I forgive people all the time? How do I keep a right perspective on money? Trust God for all of my material needs and be both salt and light in a dark and decaying world. Can we relate to these people? Mm -hmm. Do I have a witness in here today? Amen. We had hope that hope is going to spread. We had hope that our business will make it through. If I step on your toes, then this one is for you. We had hope that we would keep our job. We had hope that our nation would come together rather than fracture and fall apart. We had hope that injustice would end in our generation. We had hope that our marriages were last. We had hope that the family member that was here last year, but it's not this year, could celebrate another holiday with us. That's a lot of fun, I know. But what is hope? It's hope wishful thinking like, hmm, I hope it's sunny today. I hope it snows on Christmas. I, I hope I get an end of year bonus. Or, Positivity, a, a, a kind of optimism that the best is yet to come. Yeah. Now, hope is a noun in the dictionary, and it is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen, a feeling of trust. In scripture, hope is the expectation of coming good based on the person and promises of God. It's a kind of emotional energy that's based in the future, but it's fuel for the present. It connects the two comings of Jesus so that we are now participating in it. We're not just remembering the one and believing in the other. We're participating in the continuity of the coming. Now, hope is all about the now, not yet. But we as people, we tend to think of hope as despair or disappointment. But what if disappointment was a good thing? What if disappointment is just an emotional signal from your body that your hope was set on the wrong object? After all, hope must have an object. It must have something to attach itself to. What if disappointment comes with a gentle invitation from the Spirit to recenter our heart's desire? There were many women who will forever be remembered, be remembered in history. In Luke's Gospel and his epistle, the Book of Acts, he has written about many women who will forever be acknowledged for who they were. Anna who recognized Jesus as the long way of Messiah, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, mm -hmm. Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, friends of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, a woman from whom Jesus cast out demons, Susanna, Sapphira, the wife of Ananias, and the woman with the issue of blood, mm -hmm. who walked around for so many years and was shunned by the world. All of the women Luke has written about, out of all of them, there's only one who will be remembered in human history. Her name in Hebrew is Miriam, and we know her as Miriam. God the Father planned before time to send his son. He planned this before the world existed. In the Old Testament, 
prophets were told that God would send the Messiah to Israel. In Isaiah 7 and 14, Isaiah says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. The promised arrival of the Messiah was fulfilled through a young virgin girl named Mary. And Mary said to the angel, How will this happen? Since I'm a virgin. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called Mary. For nothing with God is impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let be to me according to your word, and the angel departed from her. Verses 34 through 38 is the latter part of the angel Gabriel's announcement to Mary. Gabriel came to visit Mary in the sixth month of Elizabeth's presence. He told her that God chose her to be the mother of the Son of God, and her son shall be called Jesus, which means God's sister. He will be great. He will be great and called the son of the highest and will be exalted above all and have an eternal kingdom. After Mary heard the angel Gabriel's words, it dawns in her mind that she was the virgin that Isaiah prophesied about. Mary's realization of this truth caused her to be profoundly confused. Because I know I would be. She was bewildered. She had mixed feelings about hearing Gabriel's words. Luke tells us that she was troubled. So she asked Gabriel a question. She said, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? That's a logical question, that's right? <laughs> but Mary was willing to submit to the Lord's plan for her life. And it would change her forever. Mary certainly had a right to say no to all of this. But she desired submission. She was willing to do whatever God required her to do. Her heart was submissive to the one who created her. In verse 18 of Luke 1, Zechariah asked a similar question. He asked, how should I know this? He was an old man, and his wife, who was barren, she was old as well. But he asked for a sign. He wanted a sign, like a lot of us, because he doubted. He doubted. And because he doubted, God caused mutinous and deafness to strike him as punishment. Take a second to think about that. Because he doubted, he couldn't speak. He couldn't heal because he died. Yeah, come on now. But Mary wasn't like Zechariah. She didn't die. She believed. But she could not comprehend how was it possible for a woman to conceive without the assistance of a man. What? But Gabriel did not say to her, when you come together with Joseph, you will conceive. That's not what he said. She couldn't understand how it was possible at this point in her life. But Gabriel's explanation gave a simple answer to Mary's question. The conception of a child will be a divine miracle. And miracles are rare today. Not impossible. The fact that Zechariah and Elizabeth could conceive in their old age, despite Elizabeth's barrenness, was a miracle. Some people, not any of y'all, some people, and not me, but some people, don't believe that miracles can happen. Just keep looking forward, don't raise your hand. However, there is evidence of God's miracles throughout the Bible, through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. 
Because when Jesus was born, he was born holy. Now, how many times has God given you signs in your life? Come on. How many times? Signs are given to help us understand the will of God. Mary received the sign. And the sign was Elizabeth's pregnancy. Mary didn't die. But God strengthened her faith and comforted her. Mm -hmm. Mary humbled herself to obey the word of the Lord. She was a truly obedient servant. Today, we could definitely, definitely learn a lot from Mary and Elizabeth. Uh -huh. Especially with what's going on in the world. Come on. I remember like four years ago, I was dealing with an issue, a health issue. And the only people who knew about this health issue were my family and close friends. Now, I went to the doctors a few times. They said, yeah, let's try this, yeah, let's try that. Okay. Nothing worked. But I trusted the doctors. Now, I'm not saying I didn't trust God, because he put doctors here. I trusted him first, but I trusted the doctors. That the situation that I'm dealing with, they can fix. It was fixed. However, I had to go through a whole lot of stuff to get to the end result. Mm -hmm. God gave me signs, a lot of them. But again, I had to trust the doctors. They tried one procedure. No, that didn't work. That ended me up. I ended up back in the hospital again. But the second time, Got it right. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because a lot of people, again, didn't know what I was going through, but I was coming to church. I was still praising and worshiping God in the midst of this issue. All right, all right. I could have lost hope. Mm -hmm. I could have said, this is never going to change. Why is this happening to me? But I never thought that one time. When things happen, I always say, why not me? Mm. Never, why me? Why not me? Because I could be an example for somebody else. Mm. It was fixed. I had to have surgery, but it was fixed. Praise God, four years later, it was fixed. Mm. But I remember, like I want you to remember, that our hope comes from God. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Because we all belong to this world. We were chosen by God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to say this to you because we are all extraordinary, special, peculiar people who should stand out from everybody else, who should be kind to people, who should encourage yourself and somebody else. And if you can't encourage yourself, don't even think about putting that on somebody else. <laughs> you should be light and darkness. Light and darkness? How could you be light and darkness with everything that's going on today? Is that what you're thinking? Let me tell you how you can be light and darkness. When somebody cut you off in a room, I'm guilty of this. <laughs> Don't fuss them out. I do it. I'm sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Because that's rude. When the people in your job get on your nerves. Yeah, that's happening to me right now. However, thank God that you have a job. I didn't give up. 
And whatever you're going through, don't give up either. Mm -hmm. Because in the midst of all this, there will be glory. Yeah, that's right. After this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right.
You have to hope in what's to come. You have to hope that, yeah, it looks a little glim and gloomy right now, but this too shall pass. We can only do the best that we can. I tell my daughter this all the time. We can only do what we can and watch God do everything else. When your bills do, watch him pay the bills when you don't have the money. When you're sick in your body, watch him heal you. When the doctor said, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you. When your children run and rampant, it, and you say a prayer or two or sixteen, watch him change them kids. When your family members do too much, absolutely, and you give a prayer up to God, he'll prep that all. But you have to do something too. You can't just give it all to him and expect him to do it. Play your part. Play your role. Because we all have a role in this. Oh yeah. I'm talking to me too. You can just be the best you that you can be. And watch God do the rest. Yes, he will. But no matter what it looks like, you can't lose hope. Joseph could have lost hope when them darn brothers of his threw him down in that pit. But he said, mm -mm -mm, I'm not doing that today. He remembered where his help came from, who held his hand along the way. You could have lost hope yesterday when that situation that you found yourself in was getting on your last nerve. That's right. But you got up this morning, not in your own strength, not in your own power. No. You got up and put on the full armor of God and walked your way, drove your way, marched your way on around to Cherry Green United Methodist Church uh -huh. so that you can see Jesus one more again uh -huh. and say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because of that, you still have hope. So hold on to that. Even if it's this much, and that's not a lot. Hold on to hope. Hope will take you places that you never even imagined. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers because I don't, don't claim to be, don't want to have all the answers, but I got to do. Because I've been rocking with Jesus for a minute. Mm He's -hmm. been rolling with me. Always been that common denominator. So I'm going to keep on hanging there with him. And he told me a few things. and showed me a few things through me. To tell you, whatever's coming tomorrow, don't lose hope. Whatever's coming tonight, don't lose hope. Whatever you love at the house, don't lose hope. Whatever you think about right now while you're looking at me, don't lose hope. Whatever's coming at the end of 2023, don't lose hope because we're still here. In the midst of a pandemic, we're still here. So no matter what it looks like, if it's a big thing, if it's a small thing, if it's a thing, don't lose hope. That's fine. Because just like that, in a blink of an eye, God will change that thing for you. That's right. It changed. That's right. So again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks like, whatever you're facing, health issues, whatever it is, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope in the God that will heal you, that will deliver you, that will set you free, that will blow your mind in the midst of chaos, mm -hmm. will open up doors, he will break down windows, yeah. he'll crack something, he'll let you put your toe in, he'll do so much yeah. for you. Yes, he will. If you just hope. Yes, I am. So I'll leave you with this. The God we serve is all-knowing anyway. Because he knows what you need before you ask him. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't say it out of your mouth, he heard about it in your mind. Mm -hmm. Get a closer relationship with God. Get to know him a little better for yourself. Flex that whole muscle. Go ahead, flex it. Lean in 
a little closer to God. Get to know God a little better for yourself. And I promise, I guarantee I put a stamp right on it. That no matter what it looks like, if you don't lose hope, for God, all things are possible. That's right. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Glory to God. The Lord is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. What a joy. What a joy. On this first Sunday as we look at the theme, hope. Amen. And we're sharing today in the Holy Communion. Amen. The Holy Communion. I trust that those that are with us today online, amen, can take communion with us as well. As we prepare our hearts and minds and spirit today. If you're with me, uh, you have your hymn that we're going to, we are on uh, the 12th page, amen. In the hymn we'll go Lord, I trust that. If you, if you don't have your elements, amen, just hold your hand up. If you don't have your elements, just hold up your hand and I'll, I'll usher you to make sure you get that. And if you're at home, if you're at home and you want to take communion with us, I encourage that. As, as you're with us uh, at home, you want to take communion, you can get some bread, amen, and some juice, glory to God. And take communion right along with us as we prepare our hearts to partake in which the disciples took part in with Jesus. We go page 12, amen. Follow me, say this if you will. Christ our Lord invites you to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. We confess that we have not loved you. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have heard the of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God our God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. 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 
Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body, I mean the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Pour by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. sacrament that Jesus alone took with his disciples on that night. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he told his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you and for many. Take, eat of it, all of it, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper was over, and I can imagine Jesus and the disciples were around the table. And he took the cup. And he blessed it. And he told the disciples, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Of, of sin. He told them to take it, drink of it. all of it and do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to come and to partake in this holy sacrament. We ask, oh God, that you continue to fill our hearts and fill our spirits, Lord, as we continue in this season of Advent, remembering you, God, remembering you, Lord, because you said that you'll be coming back. So we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just want to quickly remind folks today as you prepare to leave. On the third Sunday, which is December the 17th, there's a Christmas party. We're going to have a Christmas party. I want everyone to be mindful of this, that on the Christmas party after service, they're asking that everyone plan to um, bring a wrap gift. And, and listen closely, because this is important. Bring a wrapped gift. Make sure the gift is wrapped because we're going to have some fun. Amen. We're going to have some fun on our Christmas party. Make sure the gift is wrapped so that, and, and so that we, everybody can participate in the games that we're going to be playing 
on Christmas. That's December the 17th. Amen. And also our media ministry, I want to share also our media ministry is currently in a fundraiser. Please support them. Amen. It's in the bulletin. Uh, a Krispy Kreme donut support our media ministry. Amen. See any of the members of the media ministry and they will, all of the details they will also be sharing uh, with you. And finally, our leadership meeting, our church meeting, very important church meeting. This is our, this will be our last meeting for the year. Amen. So make sure on these, on, on, um, uh, December the 9th, which is this coming Saturday, please, men, women, children, be there. Amen. That'll be our final leadership meeting for 2023. Please be there. Amen. Everyone have a blessed one. Bless and powerful, powerful. Sunday. 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 Okay. Amen. Amen. Let us, let us do the benediction as we prepare to leave from this place. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we may ask the thing, according to the powers that work and move within us, to God be the glory, to the church, and to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best.